Hi everyone, so welcome to another academic video. I don't know about you, but when I've spent a lot of time researching a topic and working with my, my team and researchers and we put together a journal paper and we're about to send it off to the journal editor for peer review and hopefully to be accepted, there's always that point when I remember the checklist that you have to go through in order to submit a journal paper to a journal. So in this video, I'm going to talk through that journal paper checklist that stands between your manuscript and submitting it into a journal paper for peer review. So this isn't a video about the actual manuscript itself. Um, maybe you've already submitted loads of papers into journals. Maybe you've never done it yet and you're curious about what happens. I'm going to pick up the story from you having a completed drafted journal paper. So let's say you and your co-authors have got your paper ready to go and you're about to submit it to the journal. Now it would be awesome if you could just press one button, upload your manuscript, send it off and that's all you have to do. But I remember the first time that I did this and I went to upload the paper, there are so many extra boxes that you need to fill out. So first things first, every journal will be slightly different, um, but typically they're going to ask you to upload your manuscript as one of the first things on this checklist of boxes. And your manuscript format will vary from journal to journal. It could be single column, they might want the text in two columns. Sometimes they want it spaced with a particular line spacing. Sometimes they want them to be numbered, the lines. Um, so it'll vary journal to journal. But typically, when you get to the stage of going in and uploading it to a journal for consideration, one of those first checkboxes is going to be upload your manuscript. And then quite often there'll be a second one saying, please can you upload a declaration of interest? And what this is essentially, it's you declaring that yourself and your co-authors haven't got any competing interests that could bias or kind of affect the particular paper that you're uploading. Journals then may ask you to upload any number of extra files. They could ask for the raw file that you wrote the manuscript in. So maybe a Word file or a LaTeX file. They could ask for the figures as a separate file to be uploaded to the journal they might ask for an author credit statement. The author credit statement is where you go through all the authors on the paper and essentially you say what role each author played in contributing towards that paper. So maybe they wrote a section, maybe they analyzed the data, designed the equipment, came up with the idea. That is your author statement. So we haven't gone beyond the first checkbox so far and already we've had to upload our manuscript, our declaration of interest and possibly some other files as well. So once you've got those files uploaded, you're not home and dry yet. The next step is quite often to then classify your own work. So typically the journal then will ask you to look through subsections or subcategories and say which one your work is aligned to. And I guess it's the way of the journal checking that your research is going to match their research interest of the journal because journals have their own identity and they have their own focused areas that they're looking at and your research, your research paper needs to align with the research interest of the journal in order for them to consider it for publication. Right, so we've got the document uploaded, <laughs> we've uploaded this declaration of interest, we have classified our work, and you might think, yep, that's it, I can now press submit. Not quite yet. So quite often then a journal is going to ask you, do you want to have a specific editor assigned to looking after your research paper submission? So journal papers often have edited teams, so there could be three or four academics who are editors working on a particular journal and they may have slightly different research focus and interest areas within the theme of that journal. 
So in the same way that you classified your, your research, it then might be possible for you to say, actually, my research aligns to the interest of this particular editor, so I'd like them to look after my paper as it goes through the journal process of being peer reviewed. But quite often as well, you can say that you have no preference at all and you get any editor. And then normally you're asked to then provide reviewers. So you have submitted your research paper with your results and your ideas. And then the journal asks you to nominate other academics to provide your work with a peer review. And so obviously these academics cannot be people that you've worked closely with. So they can't be people that have co-authored the paper with you. They can't be people that you have an ongoing, very close collaboration with. These need to be independent scholars. Somewhere in the process of uploading your manuscript to a journal, there's going to be a question about funding. Um, they'll ask you to make sure that you've acknowledged all of your funding sources um, and it could be a statement within your draft paper and sometimes it's a separate form saying that I have actually acknowledged everybody who funded any part of this research and that's quite an important one to get right. Um, some companies and third parties who may have funded work have specific statements that they want to be included at that point. So again, that's something that I try to think about early on in my paper writing is just making sure I, I've got all the different funders and statements correct for those who are involved in that particular research paper. And despite the fact that you've uploaded a file, be that a Word file, a PDF file of your completed journal paper, this manuscript data box that pops up wants the highlighted information from that journal paper. So you might need to upload your title separately. You might need to upload your abstract separately. Quite often you have to upload keywords. So kind of these are used in metadata to help search for the paper. You might need to upload your authors and that can be quite involved. So you might have to upload for every person who's helped co-write that paper, their, their affiliation, uh, what qualifications they have and a contact email address. And these, um, these boxes are getting smarter and smarter. You can't often put the same email address for everybody. So if you're the corresponding author, you can't put your address in everybody's author, de author details box because the code knows you've done that. The computer knows what you're trying to do. So you have to make sure that for each of your co-authors, you have their correct contact details. And quite often as well, you have to then restate the funding situation and that you've acknowledged all of your funding. And at that point, Hopefully you've uploaded enough information to be able to submit your journal paper, so your journal manuscript, off to that particular journal for consideration by the editor, hopefully to go through peer review and then to be published in that journal. It's, it's a long old journey, <laughs> both to write the paper and then to get it uploaded for, for consideration with a journal. Um, in a future video, I'll chat about what happens when people peer review your work um, and the kind of feedback <laughs> that might come your way when you submit a journal paper. But let me know, have you been through this process? Have you submitted journal papers? Was it a quick process for you? Was it a very complicated process? I think it does vary quite a bit from subject to subject, depending on which journal you're going for. Um, but let me know, do you, do you enjoy the submitting of a journal paper or do you find all these extra boxes and checklists at the end a bit annoying and maybe a bit tedious to have to do before you can send your work off to the journal editor? Oh, let me know. Um, but as always, I hope you have a really good week. We are now in week four, so we are plowing through our semester. Um, so yeah, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're having fun if you're teaching or working or researching at a university. Um, hopefully I'll see you here next week, but leave me a comment. Um, if I didn't say at the start, my name's Caroline. I'm a UK-based physics lecturer here every Monday. So I will see you hopefully next week for another video. Bye.